If you're looking to master Figma variables, this video is for you, where today we're going to start off by looking at how to swap variants using your Figma variables, as you can see right here, before we move into how to organize your variables properly in different collections, before looking at how to choose colors for your dark mode. Again, three really important things that you should know if you're looking to master Figma variables. Let's get started. All right, the first thing we're going to look at is how to swap your variants in a prototype using Figma variables. So let's look at our setup. So right now I just have this basic purple button and then I have three variants of an image. I'm of course a big F1 guy. So what I have here is a Red Bull car, a Ferrari car, and then a Mercedes car. So let's go ahead uh, and set up our uh, UI to start just so you can have a quick visual as to what it is we're gonna be doing. So we're gonna have a button and then we're going to have a little image. We're gonna build a little image carousel. So let's set this button value to change image. And what we want to have happen is when we click this button, we want the image to change. So we want our Red Bull to go to our Ferrari to go to our Mercedes. So in order to do this, let's look at setting up our Figma variables to start. So I'm gonna go into my local variables and let's create some string variables here. So first things first, string variable. And the value of our string variable needs to match the name of our variants. So in this case, we have our Red Bull as the name of the variant. We have Ferrari as the name of the variant, and we have Mercedes as the name of the variant. Again, so we need the value, not necessarily the name, but the value of the string variable to match the name of our variant. So let's go through and build these together, starting off with our Red Bull. So we have Red Bull and just notice how it's lowercase. And again, Figma variables is case sensitive. So our Red Bull car will be equal to Red Bull, all lowercase. Let's then look at our Mercedes, I mean, our Ferrari. So we have uh, our Ferrari, again, Ferrari in lowercase. So our Ferrari in the value needs to match the name of our variant, Ferrari. And then let's do one for Mercedes. We're gonna set this to Mercedes. Beautiful. So now that I have uh, a copy of my Red Bull variable or Red Bull variant, I now need to assign a variable to this variant. Again, I need to connect the two or else Figma is not going to know which is which. So in type, so when I select my instance next to uh, the drop down, I have this little variable indicator. So I'm going to assign the variable Red Bull to this specific variable, variant, excuse me. So now let's go ahead and prototype it. So I hit the change image, add an interaction. I want to set the variable Red Bull to Ferrari. And then again, on click, I want to set the variable Ferrari to Mercedes. So let's go through and have a quick preview. So now when I hit change image, I can see that that changes to Ferrari. And then when I hit it again, I can see that it then changes to Mercedes. And the reason that happens is because I set it up where I set the variable Red Bull to Ferrari and then Ferrari to Mercedes. And that is a real quick overview as to how you can prototype using your Figma variables in order to swap your different variants. All right, now let's look at the hotly debated topic of actually organizing your Figma variables. Now, when we're organizing our variables for design systems or whatever, we like to break it out into three different collections. So we have our brand collection, our alias collection, and our mapped collection. Now, what's the purpose of these, uh, each of the three, and why is there a tree here? So your brand collection, almost look at them as if it's the, like the roots of a tree. So they're all your basic brand colors and they're setting the foundation uh, for what will be your mapped collection a little bit later on. So again, they're not assigned a purpose or a role. What they are are really just their hex codes in their purest form. Your alias collection is where you're actually assigning the brand colors a purpose. So this is where you're taking your brand colors and assigning them a role like a primary color, a secondary color, a neutral color. And then you take your alias colors and you bring them into your mapped collection. You can almost look at these like the leaves of a tree where you're branching out all of these different colors into a specific role. So what's the color you should use for an action button? What's the color that you should use for text? What's the color that you should use for things like text hover? All those different kinds of specific roles uh, that elements can have. Now, I know that might be confusing if this is the first time seeing this. Uh, so what we're going to actually do is just look at a couple quick examples together. Where we build out a very miniature library. All right, so if this concept is new to you, let's go through and build out just a very miniature, miniature uh, variable library together. Again, just to walk through you through 
uh, the topic. Now, if any of this is confusing, whether it's the naming conventions or the concept overall, we do have a ton of great videos on building out libraries where we go through this more in depth. I'll leave some links in the description uh, below. So, but if we think about the UI Collective brands, you know, we have this nice purple color here. So let's start off in our brand collection. Again, we have our brand collection, our alias collection, and then our mapped collection, and all of them are empty right now. So let's start off with our brand. So let's start off with our purple. Again, let's, uh, oops, purple, put this in a folder. So purple is 300. So let's assign that color there. Let's create a, uh, another variable. So our purple 200 will be that middle one. And then our purple uh, 300, oops, sorry, our 100 will be uh, that one uh, on the end. There we go. So we have our purple colors in our brand collection. And again, remember your brand collection is really just all of your brand colors as they stand, you know, the hex codes in their purest form. What we want to do then is bring these into our alias collection, but give them almost like a purpose. So again, think about UI collective our primary color is the purple. So this is where we want to give, assign uh, those purple 300s, 200s, 100, a specific role. So primary, your primary light, your primary lighter. So let's create a variable. This is going to be our uh, primary. Again, we'll keep it uh, all lowercase. And we're gonna create an alias. So what, we, what it creating an alias does is it actually just connects your alias collection to your mapped collection. Again, you don't want uh, to use your color picker uh, for your alias is what you actually want to do. Instead of custom, hit libraries and then connect uh, your primary color to your brand color. So in this case, our primary will be our purple 300. Uh, one thing I'm going to do here as well, let me just go back and rename this uh, just to keep it consistent. So we'll go lowercase p alias. There we go. All variables. So our primary, and let's uh, create a new group. Actually, this will be our primary. Beautiful. So let's then go with a uh, primary light. And again, create the alias. Don't forget to do that and tie that back to the brand color. So in this case, it's our purple 200. Let's then go with a primary lighter, create the alias, which will be that 100. Okay, so now we have our primary colors. So let's go ahead and think about a button. Which of these colors should be the surface color for a button? So we have them assigned as primary, but do we want the surface to be primary? Do we want it to be primary light? And your mapped collection is where you're actually giving it that specific role. So let's go into our mapped collection and let's create um, a variable that we're gonna call our surface action. And what we want to do then is create the alias, but instead of tying it back to our brand collection, we're actually tying it back to our alias collection. So we're saying that a surface action for a button will be our primary purple. Let's now look at text. So if we want a text on action, we might want that to be uh, lighter again. So it stands out from that purple background. So it's going to be our primary lighter. So now when we go ahead and build a button, let's just say, click me, add some auto layouts, add a quick fill. What I'm going to do is apply the surface color uh, that we built again in our mapped collection. So surface action and our text will be our text on action. And that's a real quick walkthrough as to how we like to organize our Figma variables in different collections. All right, so now let's build on uh, what we learned in the last part of this video and look at uh, dark mode color variables. You know, dark mode, especially for those who are building out design systems is one of those things that's super confusing. A question I get all the time is what are the colors that I should be using for my dark mode? But luckily for you, it's really not as daunting <laughs> as it seems. So if we open up our variables here and are mapped, Again, if we look at our button as well that we built together. So we have our surface action, which is our primary color and our text on action, which is our primary light. So we have our surface action again, this purple and then our text on action, which is that lighter purple. 
what I like to do for dark mode, and again, this isn't necessarily the perfect approach for every single scenario. Again, it's super important that you still go through your proper accessibility checks, looking for things like color contrast, is really just to inverse them. So what I mean by that is if we add another mode, and let me uh, expand this out uh, just a little bit. So if this is our light mode, and this is our dark mode, what we're going to do is set uh, our surface action on our dark to our primary lighter. And then the same for our text on action. So this will be uh, just our primary primary. There we go. So now if we have, uh, let's look at how applying those modes and just to show you the end results. So what I'm going to do then is change that. And then our mapped is that dark. So essentially what I've done is really just inversed the colors between light mode and dark mode in our mapped collection um, in order to achieve our dark mode. Thanks for watching today's video, everyone. Just want to encourage everyone to sign up and join our community at uicollective.co. It's totally free to join uh, for all questions relating to design systems, Figma variables, uh, and more. We also have a ton of great free resources uh, on our website, so be sure to check those out. I hope to see you online, UI Collective.